Well, hey everybody. What I thought I'd do today is take 16 cans or so of this apple juice concentrate from Walmart and make some wine with it. So this could be my biggest batch to date. Uh, I've got both of my primary fermenter buckets. They each will hold um, six, up to six gallons. I don't know if I'll make quite that many, um, but I'm gonna make a pile of apple wine, air quotes on the apple. Um, found a recipe, most of them were for gallon batches, but I'm gonna make a big batch. So a little bit of scale up, a little bit of guesswork. Um, so I'll take you through the steps that I'm gonna follow to make this wine. So we'll start by dumping this uh, frozen concentrate into the bucket. Um, it's been a while since I've been to the store, a uh, couple hours anyway, so it's kind of slushy, kind of squishy. There's some left over, so I'll, I'll rinse it out in, in uh, water that I've got here waiting to go. Um, but basically it's gonna be adding the, the concentrate, some sugar, yeast nutrient, a little bit of lemon juice, and of course this concentrate and then I'm going to mix it all up. I have a, uh, a Worley mixer here. I'm going to put on my drill and then uh, once everything's well mixed I will add the yeast and put the, the lids on it and it'll get going. Okay so what I ended up with there was um, three gallons of apple juice in each bucket. Uh, that was eight cans of the concentrate and the remainder of the water, up to three gallons if I did my math right. That came out right on. Uh, I got a 10 pound bag of sugar. I'm gonna put five pounds, approximately five pounds in each uh, bucket. Uh, at that point, I'll probably put a, a couple squirts of lemon juice in each bucket as well and give it a stir with my drill uh, paddle mixer just to get the sugar all mixed up. So I've got the sugar divided roughly in half. Um, let me show you how scientific we get here. Uh, we take this and put a little bit in. And we go to the other bucket. Put a little bit in. So the thing I'm trying to emphasize there with your with your guessing and your about halves and your squirts and your dribbles and, and things is this isn't a science project where you have to hit everything right on the, the CC and the milliliter. Uh, just get it close and the, the yeast and the sugar will sort the rest of it out. Here we go with the mixer. Whoa, easy does it. Jeez a wee. There you go, easy does it. Maybe if your drill has two speeds, don't be like me, keep it on high, put it on low. So I've got the first packet of yeast um, in the warm water. Uh, I've got two types of yeast this time around, um, poor planning on my part, but it is what it is. But when you wanna pre-hydrate it, the package that I just put in there wanted it, the water to be between 104 and 109. The other packet of yeast that I had wanted to be closer to the mid 90s. So I've got the one that wants the warmer water. The one right now you can see it up in there um, getting hydrated. And then uh, once I'm done with all the steps, in about 15 minutes, it'll be ready to put into the wine. Okay, some more super technical measuring. The recipe wanted golden raisins. We didn't have any, but we have California raisins. California is a golden state. How about that? Um, this is a 20 ounce container. It's about half full. And I'm just going to take a couple handfuls. Super, super scientific. And drop them in. I'll do that with both batches. Next step, add this yeast nutrient. And if you're like me and you said, well, I thought that the yeast eats the sugar and that's what their nutrient is. Hey, I don't know. Uh, all I know is I put this into my last batch of wine and it is fire. Um, it's really bubbling very well in the secondary. And so I'll put it in again. So it's one teaspoon per gallon. I had to Google it, but there are three teaspoons and a tablespoon. So three gallons, I have a tablespoon. So a tablespoon of yeast nutrient per batch. Okay, so what I've done here is I've put the hydrometer into the bucket before I add the yeast. And you probably can't see on there, it's even a little bit hard for me to see in real life, but uh, this wine has a 15% alcohol potential and uh, it's in the dessert wine or sweet wine section of the hydrometer. So that's cool, that's how my lady likes it. So um, 
we'll see how it turns out. But this is the first time I've actually remembered to use the hydrometer. Um, but anyhow, so hopefully when this wine finishes, it will finish sweet. Uh, if not, uh, we'll put some apple juice back into it, but I'd like to just leave it um, pure wine as much as I can. Well, here I was using the wrong terminology when you put your yeast into warm water so that it wakes up after being dry. And in the fridge, it's called proofing. And when you actually, when you put it into the, the uh, liquid, which is called the must, that's called pitching. So here we go, pitching yeast. Let me just shake it. Get it all out of there. All that's left to do now is uh, put the lid on and put the airlock on. Um, so we'll do that next. Well, there it is. Two uh, buckets side by side with the airlocks on. I have the packets of yeast on top of the buckets that I used them on since I used two different styles. I'm kind of curious to see which is better. The recipe called for one I hadn't used before, and the other one is the one I've used on every batch. So the thing I want to emphasize here is just just do it. Um, my wife's grandpa was a very smart guy. Um, he used to make wine, and he did not have all the things that we have today. So if he can make wine um, all those years ago on the farm, surely you can make wine in your kitchen, or in my case, my dining room. So uh, these will be in these buckets for a couple days. They'll start fermenting here anywhere between the next day or so. Um, leave them in there for a time, and then we'll rack them over to the secondary bottle to um, to keep going but uh, here you don't have to use the airlock if you don't have one um, they say that actually during the primary fermentation um, oxygen is good for the wine but because I don't like bugs <laughs> getting in the wine then I, I put the airlocks in um, anyhow so long story short just go out there and do it do the best you can if you mess up okay try to figure out what you did wrong and start again and try not to do that again. Um, but you can do this. Anybody can do this if I can do it. So I hope you uh, give it a shot and I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.